Is it possible to beat Shovel Knight without using the shovel? It seems like a stupid question, given the game's title. But today, we're putting this Kickstarter sweetheart to the test, and leaving the spade at home. For this run, the rules are pretty simple. At no time can we ever use our shovel, which means no shovel swiping or pogo bouncing. Everything else is fair game, which is good, because we'll need all the help we can get. So, with our rules laid out, let's get to it. Hey there folks, I'm Skip the Tutorial, and here we get to the bottom of gaming's weirdest challenges. And hey, if this is your first time here, then make sure to use a relic on that subscribe for weekly deep dives into your biggest questions. Kicking off our first run, everything should be pretty easy. Skipping through the story, we're given a path to skate past all these enemies and just enjoy the scenery. Really, this intro stage is no problem at... Oh. Well, I guess it's back to the drawing board. Since we couldn't even make it past the first screen on that last attempt, we'll need to switch up our strategy a fair bit. And as far as what to do, I think I've got an idea. You see, to add on to all those sweet retro NES vibes of the game, Yacht Club included some cheat codes. And by that, I mean they added over 300 of the things. So we've got plenty to work with. And after finding this one, we can set ourselves up with some relics, which are essentially the alternate abilities. For testing, we've got all eight of the discoverable skills at our disposal, so surely we can make it past the first screen. And surely we did. Uh, to the second screen. While the Dust Knuckles and Propeller Dagger are both great for clearing horizontal paths, none of our moves give us a way to dig down. So, uh, another one in the waste bin. Alright, so clearly we were taking the wrong approach, that much is obvious. But this time, I was sure we had something to work with. With a new save and a new code to boot, we traded all of our valuable goodies in the world for a fishing rod. His name's Fish Knight now. The interesting opportunity that the fishing rod gives us is that not only can we break blocks to our side by overlapping the hook, but we can also tunnel down. So we triumphantly make our way through, slide past the beetle, and head straight to our victory. I mean, just a simple hop in this bubble and damn it, okay, I guess that's another one that doesn't quite work out. And we ended the third run on the third screen, which, at this rate, it'll only take us 800 more runs to beat the game. Just fantastic. But in all seriousness, we're able to piece together a lot more success in this next attempt. Pulling from what worked right in the past two runs, we can hunt down the right code to make us pass the bubble. So this time, we can use a jump and propeller dagger combo to glide past the obstacle and ride by to the next screen. And really, the next few boards don't give too much trouble. Even the mini-boss dragon, who would seem like a bit more of a challenge, we can just damage clip through and be on our way. Barricades become way less of an issue, since we can just switch between the fishing hook and dust knuckles as needed. The enemies scattered along the way even give us much needed elixir refuels, but those fall off once we get to this section. Even if we're stingy with our relic use from the checkpoint and score drops from each of these baddies, we still can't slide through with any ease. And since we can't get better elixir management until after this stage, we have yet another attempt fall flat. But at least this one started to cover some ground. With our progress up to this point, the logical step is to try all the relics without elixir restrictions. Luckily, we've got a code for that as well. And worth mentioning is that these conditions are essentially what we would get from doing a fully upgraded New Game Plus run. So we're testing that validity here as well. And by this point, we're really stacked for the stage. We can break through all barriers, phase lock it through enemies, and then make it to Black Knight. And while we can take him down with just the dust knuckles, you might find it hard to land more than a few hits on him at a time. So, for this reason, I think comboing that at close combat and then using the flare wand when he moves away is the best strategy for this one. And hey, just like that, we can finally move past the intro stage. Baby steps. Next, we score our choice between King or Spectre Knight, but I always lead with King Knight first, so let's start there. For this stage, we've got pretty standard fare. Any and all dirt blocks we see only require the same fishing hook or dust knuckle situation. And besides an enemy placement here or there, we can move through these rooms fairly quick. That is, until we reach this room with the books. Which is not just a dumb way to say a library. 
She's just a room with books. And the layout here really sets up a path of inconveniences. For one, we have to hit the books for them to activate the platforms. But after that, we then need to make it back to the platforms and then hop between them all under a given time period. And while we can do these first few sections with a flare wand and proper timing, the real difficulty kicks in at the end of the room. Since we don't have anywhere permanent to land, and we can't bounce on the book to juice up its timer, it's a straight shot to the ladder. And I died plenty of times just trying to make my way over to here, either due to missing platforms or just mistiming jumps. But if we land properly and time some propeller dashes just right, we can scrape by the hitbox and climb on out of there. And really, from that point, King Knight seems like a breeze. So many of our relics do solid damage output that as long as we survive and keep the elixir high, we'll make it through fine for any of these fights. Above all else, I found firing off two flare one shots at a time to be the quickest way for us to win, and therefore our fastest ticket out of here. With one member of the Order of No Quarter defeated, it was time for us to double our score. Jumping into Spectre's stage, you'll notice a fair chunk of these little shrub things lying in the floor. But they don't harm us, and they just kind of sway with the wind, so we can just skip them and run along. Except that ignorance loses its bliss real quick, as soon as we reach this impasse at the other end of the screen. Now, a typical route has us shovel swiping these things and then bounce jumping off of them for new height. But we can't do either parts of that in the sequence here. After searching around, it turns out that we do get a bit of luck by retracing our steps. You see, if we run off this top platform and jump at just the right time, then we can chain together some propeller dashes and just barely make it past. It's frustrating to pull off, but it's gotta be the only time we face that situation, yeah? Well, I wish. After blazing through some of the easier sections with a couple fishing rod uses, we seem to be in the clear for the rest of the stage. This screen throws that all out of the window. Now with a three sleeping frog situation, we need to maneuver our way out of here, all the while not being able to pogo jump for leverage. And after testing every relic at our disposal, there's no reliable way to make it up to the ledge. And we leave yet another run in the dust. At a first glance, it would seem like the challenge here had come to a close, but really, we're just getting started. The interesting opportunity that we have here is that if you were able to track down one of the Shovel Knight amiibo, you can actually use it in-game to boost our knight. And folks, what that means is that we can finally rock some Skip the Tutorial Red. And ooh, it looks good. Oh, right, and we also have a whole slew of new relics to help us out. So let's say we go back to our earlier Spectre Knight troubles. Well here, we get a couple of new opportunities to work past these bounce shrubs with the Rising Dagger probably standing out as the most simplistic. Funnily enough, after beating past that part, the whole stage lines up. Well, not literally, but it gets easier. Most of the relic use from this point is just for quality of life and block breaking, which is nothing really new, except for one particular point where we're supposed to use this skull for weighing down the platform. However, without our ability to shovel swipe, we need to get another way to go around. Lucky for us, uh, Mobile Gear does the trick, and just about lets us slip past and get ready for the boss fight. Which, maybe we don't need too much time to prep for, since there's not much to say about Spectre Knight himself. Dust Knuckles and Flare One still reign king in my book, and our victory finally breaks us into the next part of the map. Doing Plague Knight's stage without the shovel is just as weird as you'd expect from this guy. For one, the platforming isn't exactly made more difficult without our typical moves, since most of the challenges don't center around it anyway. If it gives you trouble in a main run, then you'll have that same trouble here, but that's about all there is to say for stage traversal. Because the real sticking point here is in the bosses. First stop, we've got this Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde situation going on, which is a real pain. Typically, I like to just chain some bounces on his head when he does the monster mash and leave it at that. But this time, we don't get that luxury. So while any attack relics will do, I think the Chaos Sphere is a good one to pack for this case, as the bounces hit him while he dances around. 
It won't be over quick, but setting up on a screen edge and working through is the best bet. And for Plague himself, we use some similar tactics. In a normal run, taking him on with a shovel is a pain in its own right because he's so gosh darn frantic. So the same moves that we've pulled on previous bosses, as well as a couple of Chaos Spheres for good measure, should be all it takes to wear him down. After Plague, we move on to what is easily the most relic-intensive stage of the entire game, Mole Knight. And really, it makes sense. After all, his stage is underground and littered with dirt boxes, so of course we'll need to be breaking through those. But for this case, the real switcheroo doesn't come in the form of obstacles, but where they're placed. For instance, we'll now be tasked with destroying the blocks while on the move of a jelly beetle, which could be a bit disorientating or particularly complicated when using certain relics. However, the real hiccups of the level don't show up until halfway. For starters, we have this slime-themed sequence, which can be a real new slice of challenge, although it's entirely possible with the Dust Knuckles. However, that's not our real issue here. It's just it requires some above-average timing. No, the real struggle comes in in the form of these chain reaction blocks. And while they showed up in some simple designs earlier in the level, the trouble here comes in this layout. Now, with our main toolbox of items, there's not a simple way to blast through these floor blocks. Even the fishing hook requires some space to activate. Despite this, we can pull out one of the custom knight relics and squeeze past. Personally, I find the Flareo rod best for here. Just make sure to face away from the chain explosives when you use it. And slipping past that board gives us the layup for Mole Knight's stage. So we can finish off this order member with a couple of Chaos Spheres, especially behind his spawn platforms, and we're good to go. In theory, Treasure Knight shouldn't be all that difficult of a section. The relic use is pretty standard fare, and we can make it past most obstacles with some patience and careful jump timing. All issues I had here were on my part, I'm just too impatient. But my flaws aside, I'd venture the toughest part here has to be these rocket platforms. Using something like the Dust Knuckles to trigger them can be a problem in itself, since we launch forward after hitting something. And sometimes that can take us straight into spikes. The strongest example of this, in my mind, is the section right before the boss fight. Here, we need to ride one of these platforms while clearing through these walls. And without our shovel swipe, we really need to consider the timing and placement. But worth noting is that, although this is possible with just the dust knuckles and proper planning, the Infinite Dagger works through this section pretty easily. So we can make it to the boss, full send some Chaos Sphere bounces, and move on to the final three. So while Polar Knight isn't exactly a difficult stage, it does get its fair bit of frustration in. As far as my research goes, I got annoyed whenever I saw one of these blue fountains. Because what typically only takes a simple shovel swipe, now requires a very select few relics to make it through. And since we have to always worry about how much stamina we have for the job, we have to make sure not to lose too much trying to get through here. For that point, I think it's best to just use the Infinite Dagger to weave through these parts, using a bit of precision timing to get past the enemies. Especially these Viking guys, cause they took me down plenty of times. But as seems to be the pattern, we can make it through this stage and the boss is a breeze, with the Dust Knuckles, Flare Wand, and Chaos Spheres at our disposal. At Tinker Knight though, the whole pattern changes. Unlike what we'd seen before, this stage serves up next to no platforming challenge. At least no more than a regular run. Maybe a dust knuckle here or there, but that's about it. But while the earlier level might be pretty easy, the real complication comes in the form of Tinker Knight. While we can work through his first phase with the mobile gear, when we reach his mech, there's a whole slew of new troubles. Because we can't pogo bounce, we can't chain attacks on his head once we're up top. Which is a real problem, because if we fall off after his first set, then he'll start sending out these spheres that we have no hope of jumping off of. For that sake, the Rising Dagger to a Dust Knuckle combo is the most reliable way to get through this one. And I'm just hoping we don't have to deal with that again. Okay, so the truth with Propeller Knight is I made this stage way harder than it has to be. 
The level does have some tricky business, requiring plenty of dagger use and a mini boss that we need lots of elixir to beat. But my real goof here was that I skipped this checkpoint during the win section, which meant that when I died, I had to redo Rat City a lot more than I wanted to. But that's just about the main challenge here. We make it back, make sure to grab that checkpoint, and then infinite dagger our way to Propeller Knight, who requires plenty of dust knuckles to work past. From here, we open the gates to the Tower of Fate, and the first two levels bring their own flavors of trouble. For the first one, I recommend getting past with the Rising Dagger on platforming sections, as well as the Flareo Rod for blasting through any destructibles. As far as Black Knight, we can beat through this jerk with a couple of our old favorites, and he'll go down pretty quick. The second stage, though, gives its own form of annoyance with the Blue Fountain section. This time, the Infinite Dagger isn't gonna cut it, so the Fleet Flask will actually be our best bet here. Just make sure not to get knocked off course by these green guys. But as anyone who's played Shovel Knight knows, the real difficulty in this stage is backweighted to the boss rush. That's right folks, we're tasked with facing off against all eight of the Order of No Quarter matches once again. And all those frustrations from before come bubbling back up. But since we could beat them before, obviously they're all possible again this time. And we can work our way to the finish, maybe with the help of a couple of chalices to refill our bars. And I feel a little guilty, but it just sort of worked out this way. I had no more elixir to bring up any of the knights after the fights. So we just kind of leave them there and try to forget our guilty conscience. Which is for the best, because we've still got one last task left. After using the phase locket to breeze past the opening section and the infinite dagger for looks, we score the chance to finally fight the Enchantress. And phase one can be a little bit of a hassle if we're impatient and we miss time a step. But we can fall back on the dust knuckles like usual and make it through. Really, the whole fight amps up in phase two, with the Enchantress filling up the whole screen. Our typical strategy would be to bounce off a Shield Knight shield and then pogo jump on her head. However, we don't have that same opportunity, nor can we throw anything up at her to smack her head. For this stage, we throw Shield Knight to the side, and we use a strategy similar to what we pulled on Tinker Knight, a just rising dagger to a dust knuckle finish off. And with that final blow, that's it folks. As the credits roll, I'm glad to say that it is possible to beat Shovel Knight without ever using a shovel. And with that, dust knuckle this one up in the top right to see our attempt at Mega Man 11 pacifist style. Or fish up in the bottom right for another video. If you want new uploads every week, then play the Warhorn to that subscribe. And until next time, take care, and you have a good one, alright?